All right, welcome back to Inside YKTR. Lukey's up on a wedding today, so you've got Jacko sitting in here with the boss, and we are brought to you by the good people at Kelly Partners, Isaac. Kelly Partners, best accountant in Sydney. Um, hit Danny up. We'll put the, do we do we put the contact details down below? In the YouTube description. Are you sure? Yep. Yeah, the good. Podcast description. All right, so Danny's the man. Uh, you need numbers. He's got, got a great marketing background as well and deals with businesses all the time. So great friend of mine. I recommended all my friends that run businesses towards him. Um, a lot of people aren't happy with their accountants, but I love mine and I love sending them more work. So hit him up. Great guy. Great accountant. That's it. That's all you need. Inside YKT, obviously a lot happens in a week here, as you'd know. Let's start with yesterday. We had the big day. The boys, uh, Shark Tank Vibes, presenting why they should be going to Magic Round in Sydney. That was fun. That was fun. First of all, tell me a little bit about why they had to do what they did. And then we'll rip into the actual, how it all went down. Oh, I think just the way the sort of scope approached me on the first part of it, it was just kind of like, can I have something? It was, there was no like sort of structure in them behind it. And I think once I replied to him and sort of go, oh, bro, you need to sort of approach this in a different manner, um, it was a lot better p- because, and I think he understood that straight away. And obviously with the help of Lukey, Lukey's been in and around me for a long time. So he sort of understands how I work on a day-to-day basis and how I think. And um, I think once you, like, you sort of just come in and go, oh, can you shout me and send me up to... Um, Brizzy, in my, in my mind, I'm going, oh, these cunts just want to go on a bender if on like company money. So um, they presented well, and yeah, it was a bit of a giggle and it made for some good content. The actual like process of how they went about presenting, I thought was actually quite interesting because they obviously got the message pretty quick that they need to come with a bit of structure <laughs> and they had the idea. And then obviously when Lukey put the framework in around, I actually think it was, I know we were kind of took the piss with it. It was a bit of a giggle with the whole Shark Tank vibes, but there was actually some good, some some value in the presentation. Yeah, of course. And like I think effort's always important. Like yeah. so a lot of the times in and around Rike ATR, like a lot of the shit is like gossip where from other people where if someone's not happy it'll go through to Corey and then it'll come through to me. So I, instead of going that long way around, I'd rather the boys come straight to me and go, Do you know what? I'm not happy with this, so I'm not happy with this design, I'm not happy with this content. Um, here's three different solutions for it that I think could work better. And that way you're more inclined to get a yes from me if you come with solutions. Because like I've dealt with Corey for like four or five four years now in business and a lot of the times like I always say like um, I need solutions not complaints so he'll come in and go like oh I don't, I don't like that font and I go oh, alright cool what font do you want and he goes oh just anyone but that one so like I used to be a dick and just get like you know and like Canva go to the next font and I go oh sweet let's just do this one he goes, nah no, now you've just been like a silk <laughs> <laughs> so like and, and it's still happening now where a lot of people go in and around me uh, in and around just a long way to come to me like the office is like right there come through come with solutions and um, they come with solutions yesterday and they get yes you, you'll get a yes like I'm not opposed to spending money on content like I want content like I'm hiring more people to get more content I think we do it well uh, but just make sure you come correct I think they came correct once the you gave them the blueprint. So it was two vlog ideas, four food vlogs, which we'll obviously get into the content side of it, and the design stuff, which I know sort of took the boys uh, by surprise when you hit them with that because they weren't allowed to lean on Lukey. I know yeah. I'd be fucked if you said don't ask Lukey for anything. Um, but they turned around with some decent little designs there, scope, or canvas scope over there. Yeah. Did all right. Um, yeah, like obviously like a lot of the – like. There's a lot of pressure on Lukey because he one he says yes to everything, um, two he can fucking do everything as well. So like a, a lot of people just go, oh Lukey, do this, do this, and he'll do it for him. So um, I'm gonna pull some of that stuff up. It would would have been interesting to see what they come up with if Lukey didn't help with their presentation. But now they've had a blueprint of what it sort of looks like. Um, yeah, hopefully they come correct. And like, there's so many cool things that happen in and around sports that we should be at. And these guys can be it can be doing it. But yeah, I don't know. I th- that's the way to go about it, in my opinion. Let's build out on the content plan. So um, the boys, preliminary, have the green light to go up and do their thing. Um, You'll be sending a couple of babysitters with them as well, which we'll get into. But in terms of the actual content plan, what can people expect to see from from Simeon Scope up there in Magic Round? Um, Their original one was like, we'll be at every single game. Like in terms of, obviously when you're filming content, you understand like some of the, some of the, like filming a whole day, like that's probably not the right way to do things. Uh, One, battery life. Mm -hmm. Two, you get a whole fuckload of content. You're going to have to look through all of it. And go so like I I I'd prefer structure and and I call it like intermittent content content where like you know intermittent fasting you only eat in a certain amount of window I think content should be like that as well so you're there on a Friday um, you got an hour Let, let's just focus on now we can make the best content now and then you don't have to fuck around going through editing and stuff and that comes off the back of editing where like a couple of years of editing and, and you just film everything you just have to go through everything and chop it all up and it's fucking annoying. 
So it's like it's like minimizing that, and then off the back of that, like I've pretty much given the green lights of um, organize their flights and hotels. Um, Luke he's going to go up because I probably trust him the most, and then Chico's going to go up as well because he probably deserves a trip away, and fuck he'll sort of keep the boys in line as well if, if he, he needs knows to. The, knows the food point. Food joints as well. Yeah, and, and like he's good for food content as well. And he's lived up there, so that definitely helps. Um, but yeah, so sort of like gave the green light last night and sort of more of the texts were coming through, like, oh, we can get a spot at the Caxton. Like, yeah. <laughs> more so like, oh, this is the content we're going to be making. So yeah, we'll see how we go from there. But types of content, like, like I said, I just need food for food content. So Scope's going to be the bacon and egg, egg roll man, very much like Dave Portnoy does pizzas. Bacon and egg rolls are like staple part of diet here. We did the, did the sandwiches yesterday and he... The, He's a natural with the food content as well. Food content is just cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It like, makes me hungry even though I've just eaten. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I've always enjoyed food content. It's easy. There's, it's like a one camera, 10 minute shot and it translates really, really well. So um, like four, four, four food content that is all I need and then two vlogs. So I've pretty much said to Lukey, like you take control of the two vlogs and the four um, food content the boy's going to look after. And then off the back of that, what does the sort of like business side of it look like? Yeah. And it's sort of the food content, I think, is a bit of a nod to obviously, like Simi was sort of half taking the piss when he threw up in the beginning during the prezo. But like when you think about you, Chico, and Normie in the history of YKTR, it was friendship, travel, food, food and yeah. drink and going out on the piss. You know what I mean? So like food has always been a big part of what you guys do, even back to help yourself days, mm. bring back help yourself. Um, so I think it's, it only makes sense that even though Simi and Scope are kind of new in that space, stay true to it. It's just easy. Like I think they're like... You, personality shines through on camera anyway yeah. and then like you just want to be doing something and like mukbang mm. you know what that is yeah 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 that's like huge in korea is it it's huge, like people are making millions of dollars off eating food in front of a camera oh yeah <laughs> oh, sorry I, I i thought you were t yeah i thought you were thinking about this um another youtuber but it's a food porny youtube i'll show you yeah um korean guy as well but no yeah no there's people making bulk cash off it and like food's relevant like everyone eats every day so you, need you want you want to you always want to like i've never had someone's had nice food and go you know what? i don't like that <laughs> <laughs> Every, everyone wants to have a nicer like food experience and sort of stuff like that so i reckon we can really nail that space it's quite chicky like it's quite female at the yeah. moment where girls like i know a girl called her name's like sydney food slut um, exactly. Tanya Asatelli, she she does some really cool food content, and I like I watch every story. So um, she makes really cool content. A um, couple of Zane's like girlfriends, friends, they make cool food as well, and I always enjoy watching the content from it as well. So I just want to do the guys' version, but it's more knockabouty, that's more snitties and, and bacon and egg rolls. But Bison also plays, also yeah. get also get males um, getting away from snitties and stuff as well because we're very routine. Mm. Like we go to a shop, we know what we want to wear. Well, we go to a restaurant, oh, fuck, let's just get a snitty. So it's like trying to explore those different options and um, just create a cool experience, a cool content through that. Any sort of, I know you mentioned Luke, you'll be heading up with the boys and just, just lastly on the old Shark Tank vibes and the Magic Round stuff. Do you have any sort of lingering <laughs> concerns or um, not trust issues, but sort of main points oh, of concern that you'll be you'll be hitting them with before they before they get on the plane. Yeah, I've like we've got Geordie and um Scope in here now. We've got, I've just set up a group chat and I've pretty much said to them already like fuck there's a stern talking to before you guys take off. <laughs> 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 and like there like there is cuz like do you know what? Like it's different like when the boys like the, both of the boys like Scope um semi right now they're probably more well known than they've ever been and they're going to a football environment where everyone sort of knows where they are and the issue for me lies like what well, the nrl they're going to look after these nrl players so well it's going to be fly in you play your football fuck off back home you're not going out like that'll be the rules um the next storyline could potentially be us like we're, we're well known. you're talking media wise media wise yeah. so if there's no bad stories in there like oh shit who, like who who hasn't done anything wrong and out of football players let's focus on something else like we're the, we're kind of like the next guys mm. like we're a we're a well-known brand we've got well-known personalities um we get to slap the ex-football player tag to ex-football player yeah. or like most of the boys have been in the paper like over the past couple of years as well or in trouble with the law or mm. stuff like that like we're the next guy so that's where my natural concern it makes me feel like a, you know when you're first grade coach and you're like boys go out and get on the piss it feels <laughs> like that and obviously there's like like once you add alcohol like i'm not i'm not saying the boys can't drink or do whatever they want to do but you get alcohol you get people gassing you up man um the fucking ego can sort of slide in pretty quickly especially when you're drunk and that's where issues start to happen and um the boy's going to be on the piss two nights a week so i tune they yeah. might be back to back you know what i mean and 
Um, not everyone loves us. Like whoppers when you're blind and some kind goes, fuck yous, I hate yous and mm. beauty of the boys are punching on again. So, well, I, Lukey, I, I, Lukey. Yeah. <laughs> Body shots, Lukey. <laughs> yeah, Lukey's had a boxing fight. So <laughs> that's, that's, where, that's where my mind wanders. But I think that's just as a business owner, I'm just trying to protect everything that I built up. Yeah. And then um, like, I think when you just do a certain part of business, you always think like what ifs as well because then when they do happen you kind of expect them as well but um, very stern talking to coming to for the boys and yeah it's going to be very stern they'll respond I think oh, I, won't, I won't, won't record that one they'll, um, they'll respond I think the content's going to be sick anyway and it's a, like it's a, it's a trust exercise like if you fuck it up like yeah cool see you later and if like, you nail it if you nail it see, you, see you're off again yeah. in a month <laughs> you know what I mean so yeah. that, that's, that's where like opportunity is great but then if you fuck it up I won't trust you ever again Speaking of uh, content, we're going to have a few changes. You can't see it behind the camera, but there's a mess of cords and we're missing our lovely podcast bench there. Uh, this studio, we've got someone coming in today to measure it all up. Yeah. The changes coming to the content studio. You've been hinting at it kind of since we had a look at next door, but what's this going to look like, man? And what does it mean for the content rolling forward? Um, yeah, it's cool. Like, I'm excited. Like, I, obviously, you love like interior design and, and stuff. Like, I've always cared about. When you walk into a place, you want it to feel good. And I always wanted my work experience to look like that. And when people come through, like, fuck, this is the best spot. And, like, it's probably only operating about 60, 70% of what it could be. You know, we added a fucking fake plant the other day. Like, Vibe. fuck, this is the vibe <laughs> shit ever. You walk in, you feel better. So, um, obviously, your missus is very good at doing all this sort of stuff. So, she's going to come in and organize it. But basically, like, so this wall here is going to be like a forest type vibe. Um, yeah. Big green wall, probably with the neon sign in there. Um, we're still trying to figure out this stuff. But basically, it's just going to be three different podcast studios that we can operate all our content in. And initially when I saw Denon's one, I almost bought that one next door, but I'm so glad that I didn't. Yeah. Um, that I've just been a fuckload, wasted wasted cash. And like, if I took that, I probably couldn't hire Scope. Um, probably couldn't hire the next guy we're going to hire. You it know what I mean? be going to Magic Round, man. Yeah. There's no <laughs> Magic Round content going up. So I think I think being a little bit stingy in that regard, but then we the space is big enough to make cool enough content. So. I was about to say, I think we've quickly found, even just with taking out that main bench there, the space, we actually have the space. We do. We, we do. don't need to knock down next door. And like we take a lot of inspiration from Brendan Schaub and those boys, Schultzy as well. When you actually look at their spaces, their content spaces, their micro spaces, they pack a lot in. So the, sh the chairs will be an extra half a metre closer. The wall will probably end here. Yep. And that's it. And then they have their little command station there that they swing and the cameras swing as well. So that's kind of our plan, I'm, I think, from what we've kind of been talking about is three different s spaces one command station, which we bought today. Shout out to Ikea. Shout and out to Ikea. <laughs> and that we just swing it. And so you get a different look every time. So we've got kind of like a footy vibe. We've got a punting vibe. We've got an inside casual business vibe. Yeah. Uh, where you and Jay can do your thing as well. So and I think it'll work. As much as I'm inspired by Denon's, like, oh, I don't want else to look anything like him. Yeah. Um, which Denon's is, is very Denon. And it's yeah, it's very sick. bloke. Yeah. Like bloke in the bar style stuff. So I want else to be like more, more, more like poppy, more fucking yeah. American Culturey. Culturey, like yeah. We, like the space, I think, should reflect A, the content we put out, and B, the content we consume. Yeah. So I think that's kind of what we're going towards. So that'd be cool. This would be like a bit of a forest vibe. Um, that's going to be kind of like a white exposed brick, and then the back one's going to be like this sort of lounge with like heaps of hypey stuff with this stuff. So that's the kind of strategy we're going to go for. Um, but it'd be cool. It'd be cool. Yeah. Speaking actually, actually, I've been been um, knocking about with this chick called Jade LaFlay at the moment. She's a super vibey. Um, checked is really big into the music industry and especially in Australia so she's a talent that's been signed on by Spotify um, she just got a deal extended the past couple of days as well she's, so she's really good at what she's doing and I really want to add a music element to us as well but yeah. I want to create a space where like um, say someone like her could come in and interview a uh, music artist and then we use that content distribute it out and move it so that's 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 how I'm thinking like cool. this is like I'm obviously going to spend a bit of money on this layout and, and stuff like that but I think you'd be able to monetize off it as well um, I wouldn't monetize off her but say someone wanted to come in and lease a spot monetize the space man yeah. monetize the space and like say say if, say if we had um, like you or like you live close here to here say if we had you running this if someone come in and like we we get we let them use the cameras and you're chopping and stuff like that yeah. you could charge like maybe three four five hundred bucks for an episode you know someone I mean? to come in on a saturday and knock out an episode from across the road man yeah <laughs> flick your flick <laughs> your money for that and it's your side hustle you know what i mean so yeah. I, i'm starting to think like that and like say if i spend 30k on this fit out we only need to do a couple of those and we can get our money back for this so yeah and then on top of that you start making profit on top of that so yeah that, that's sort of where my mind's at right now but I don't think like besides Denon, he's got a fucking cool spot. I don't really, I don't know anyone in Australia that's got this really cool podcast space because it's no. still new, and and podcasters don't make money. 
we're so ahead of Brendan Schaub in that regard. He's just launching Thick Boy Studios in a couple of months. So yeah. he's, he's creating a, <coughs> a hub in LA for um, kind of all of his podcasting mates because at the moment they're all spread across the city. And he's like, bring it all under one roof. That's smart. Clip That's it, smart. Clip yeah. the ticket. And he's like, and I'll put my studio on there, Theo's studio on there. So he's going to have all of those sort of LA comedian um, like Dwayne Wade's going to be in there as well. Cool. So there's going to be a cool little hub there. So I we're think, going to um, do like a kiddies version <laughs> in this corner here for fucking Australia's creators, you know. And that's what that's what like like we were walking through IKEA the other day, and like they've got those little like small sectioned off spots. Yeah. And like these are all podcast studios, you know what I mean? So yeah. I think eventually the next spot that I do get it'll be like that. Yeah. And everyone will have their own space. Like Scope will have his own space. Simi would have his own space. I'd have my own space, and we'd dick it all out. But like, it wouldn't even have to be that big. I mean, you think this? You think about we're in we're in a single shot right now, like yeah. this. Yeah. You could fit easily two more along that wall, another one there, and if that moved, another one there. You could have Jordan's room, you know, Scope there. It's it's very doable. Mm. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like. You talked about monetizing them before, and we're going to see. Well, we've started to see a bit of ad stream sort of rolling through. Fuck, uh, that helps, man. The podcast network, yeah. You, yeah. What kind of, talk a little bit about what that looks like um, and how how you got to, obviously, this point. Um, yeah, so obviously we've, we've linked up with the Batuta boys. They've got an ad um, business that they run off, off the side of it where they've, they've got like 30 or 40. So pod- they they an advertising agency under their umbrella? Or um, like they, they, they source the deals and they sort of clip the ticket. Mm-hmm. And um, like that's a job that we could hire out, but I kind of just don't want it in house. Yeah, um, I don't like sales. So, like me personally, I like I'm getting like a lot of offers for my podcast, the Ice Project, at the moment because it's kind of like, like it's business content. It's kind of like half motivational, it's wholesome. It's, like it's, it's wholesome. Yeah. It's wholesome. Where so someone's like Jordan's content at the moment is kind of hard to monetize because it's so like raunchy. Mm. So we're probably we're probably targeting like the wrong businesses. Like I'm getting sponsored by Office Work soon and. And um, like I've been offered like Mitsubishi deals and sort yeah. of stuff like that. So it d- definitely does help. And I always talk about multiple streams of revenue. Like why KTR Sports isn't a great business model right now, mm. um, but the branding of it's really great. So like a lot of people like, um, oh, how come you haven't been paying Scope? And like Scope was paid as talent, which means he was getting kicked back off his merch and um, ad reads, but he wasn't even getting many ad reads. And but now he's paid as staff, so that moves into a weekly. So like people don't understand the difference of that. Yeah. Before this ad stream money coming through, it becomes um, a lot easier to sort of pay people and and use that money to scale out businesses. And um, that's sort of what my job is to like broker the not get the actual deals, but then get money into the system so I can filter it out to the right places. And the Batuta Boys just takes that one little extra thing off your plate where you're not having to hit the phones and. I don't, Call, yeah. You don't want to be calling office work saying, do I have a deal for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, there's two ways, like it's weird. So like there's going to be like ad reads that we do here. So if you watch the start of this podcast, um, Danny, he actually pays me to for those because I can get him my clients. I do believe everything that I've just said. Like yeah. I believe in him as a business yeah, person. And that, that's another point which I think people maybe miss. Like there's plenty of businesses or potential ad reads that you have said no to or not fucked with because not necessarily you don't believe in it, but if it's a product you don't use or if it's a service you don't know about, like you're not going to gas up some carpet company you've never heard of, even mm. though they might be paying you. So, But there's two parts of this as well. So like the personal ad reads that I'm going to do, mm. they're probably businesses that I believe in. So if I do an ad read right now and I go, oh, this podcast is brought to you by YKTR, like someone's paying me for that. And if I read it like in mid-roll or pre-roll, that's actually worth mo- more money. But what's going to actually happen that you guys will notice is like our system at the moment, they're just going to plug ads into it. So yeah. it's, it's kind of just going to be like a TV. So you, you know when you watch a TV show and then halfway through like ads just start rolling up, that's going to happen on now. So yeah. what happens is businesses go like, oh, I like Scope's podcast. Can we put mm-hmm. like an ad read in front of it and in the middle of it? So like it won't, it won't always be us doing the ad reads. We get paid more for those and those are the ones we're going to be chasing because obviously more money is a better thing. But there's going to be ones that are like worth half the price that um, – and now what's, what's this? Megaphone? Is that what we use? Yes, Megaphone, yeah. So Megaphone, they're just going to plug it in. So, but the th- good thing is they'll plug it into all your podcasts. So, it's not like this podcast is sponsored, like anyone that people listen to over the whole or week. Or previous ones as well. So, the average yeah. my ones get that between – Five and seven thousand listens, but then say someone's just listened to mine, and they start listening to all the other ones. All those ads on, add on top of that as cool. well. So instead of me getting paid like it's worth seven thousand worth of ads, um, seven thousand listens, not dollars, mm. um, it's going to be like fuck. I might get twenty thousand over the week because people listen to other shit. So, so that's where it's really important. Uh, we might be starting kind of like a newsy style style show. I know Batuta Advocate do a one at seven thirty in the morning. Um, 137, one, yeah, one they do one, 7.31. Yeah. So 1.37 p.m., that's um, Gary V's media agency. Yeah. They do one at 
seven thirty one a.m. Yep. and it's kind of just kind of like a news bulletin. It's like seven minutes long. It's right, that suits us perfectly as well. It's, and it's, it's, they're not opinion pieces. They're just like letting you know what happens, mm-hmm. and then. That's, that's the time everyone's going to work. We wake up, you're a bit more motivated to listen to podcasts or listen to something because you've just woken up, you know what, you're feeling yep. good, you had a coffee, um, the average commute to work is like an hour. So I think that's probably the next show we're going to build out pretty quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm it's excited e- for that as well. It's easy enough. Oh, I can't, like, how the fuck do you build a radio stand? Like, I'm sure we can't be too far off, eh? Well, we, we went to Studio DJ and figured out you need a thousand different add-ons to the microphones to get that radio quality, but... We'll get that. We'll get there. Well, now you get all the music licensee deals and stuff like that, eh? Mate, not my domain. I wouldn't have a clue. Uh. Time to start asking some questions. Because Simi, like, Simi could do radio every day. Fuck it, easy. Mm. Easy. Um, talking about monetizing. Like ETO <laughs> <laughs> um, Monetizing, obviously, uh, that you're, you're known as the crypto guy, whether you want to be or not, brah. And you spoke to me a little bit about before, which I thought we'd get into, potentially taking crypto as part of YKTR. Yeah, yeah. Um, might start accepting crypto payments pretty soon. There's a thing called BitPay. Um, I was looking it up last night, so I've got Natasha onto it, looking at the, how that works. Uh, but yeah, I don't, like how I would don't, it work for like like an average customer, someone who wants to buy this hoodie? Like, you can buy in crypto. Yeah, you can buy in Satoshi's or say we only accept Bitcoin or Ethereum. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be like point zero 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 whatever, but it equals the same amount yep. to that current thing right now. So um, looking into that, definitely want to be in that space pretty soon. Obviously, I'm buying it personally. Uh, believe in it so would you I, consider sort of uh, paying staff in crypto as well like uh, i know that there are especially in the states there are some companies that are already getting it built into contracts uh whether the staff want it and like you said if it's equal to the dollar the dollar value anyway yeah probably doesn't. Like, so, so say for example like if i bumped your wage up by like 20 30k at the moment like oh, thanks bro i wouldn't oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't be opposed to going like oh, can you can you inf- could, could i enforce that as like my rule I'm sure. Because I mean, it's like a rule that's looking after the boys. It yeah. might not feel like it to you guys when you're trying to like live week by week, but yeah. I feel like it's, it's a thing better for you. Yeah. Um, I, like could, I think if you were certainly you know what, bro, I, I don't even know how like sick, um, Natasha goes, oh, was Lukey sick? We can pay him off a sick day. I'm like, I don't even know how that works. Yeah, it's like I don't know how sick contract. works or days yeah, or leave. If you, were to, if you were to build out, say you were to give, to, to give us a pay rise or whatever, you could build it out into a new contract. But the contract is the contract. I don't think right now you could say, say if say if you're on 100, 100K, you couldn't now say, oh, 20 of it, 20K 20 of it is going to be Bitcoin. Because we've already agreed to this, we've signed to this, so we'd have to sign a new contract. Obviously. Yeah. Like every time but you you, a, I could do that. You could like, do that. I, every oh, time cool. you offer it, I wouldn't, we wouldn't have to sign it. I should build, um, everyone has to play basketball on Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> like, <sick. laughs> those, are, those are the sort of contracts I want to sign. Hey, do you want to work here? Do you play basketball? <laughs> All right, you don't? All right, see you later. No, nah, no, nah, it's... Um, like I'll, t- I'll tell you what I want to do first. For, first and foremost, obviously, once more money comes into the system, um, what businesses do, and we're talking about this off air, they build like a war chest. So they try and build enough capital that sort of covers their business for six months, then twelve months, then eighteen months. Um, I'm going to start sort of putting an allocation away for YKTR for my business, um, percentage wise, to start stacking um, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Mm. Um, as well as cash so it's kind of like diversified I'm um, definitely going to be doing that but yeah like once that sort of builds up there might be a point where maybe a year and a half two years from now um, percentage of you guys wages is going to get paid in crypto like I think I think it's the right thing to do I mentioned to you like because you said why aren't you doing it or oh, why, it makes, isn't, it makes me <laughs> why is it why isn't Lukey doing it if it's automatic if it's automated I would do it yeah my thing is I'm just like it's a it's probably just a lazy thing like if I get money if I get cash I'm less likely to put it into something, whereas like if it's tax, like we said, or KiwiSaver or Super or whatever, but it's you automatic. Buy, you were looking at shoes yesterday. Like, yeah. why would you buy shoes and not buy like crypto? Buy. Yeah. Um, yeah, not the Reebok Club sees, but um, <laughs> Ben Askren, like like we always talk about Ben Askren, obviously was popular because he just got smoked by Jake Paul, but he pays his staff, his vloggers in crypto as well. Um, he had the famous story about one of his vloggers he offered it to him like five years ago oh, to be paid in crypto and he's like, nah, nah, I didn't do it. One of the other guys was on that. That makes sense. Like, it. yeah. I don't, like, it's, it's cool to look at that it's story now. For, it's side hustle for those guys as well. Like they have jobs and he says, hey, come and do this fight camp with me. I'll give you 10 grand or I can pay you in crypto. Yeah. Smart guys took the crypto. Cash, cash rich guys like me would have taken the cash. Yeah. Someone's off to the bank laughing. But it's more of a thing. You see athletes doing it a little bit more now and I'd be interested to see or get your thoughts on maybe athletes dabbling in that space as well and like you mentioned, as an employer, getting it built into contracts, why can't athletes start to request it? It's happening. To get built it's into a, obviously contracts. happening over in um, the US. Yeah. Um, I can't see 
Actually, LeBron, yeah. LeBron's even talking about activating his player option and, and getting that built in as well. Yeah. If LeBron does it, the world will follow. <laughs> um, yeah, and like he's he's going to influence, like he influences cards. Like he'll say a tweet and cards go up, you know what I mean? He'll be, he'll be like um, Helen Horton Tucker. Is that his name, Jalen Horton yeah, Tucker? Yeah, the Horton, number four, who, yeah. The number five for yeah. like, he says he's going to be a gun and his cards just like shoot up. So I think. Um, it's cool when he gets up young players like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. Like he's crazy. Like when. When that sort of shooting happened in Milwaukee, I think it was. Yeah. Um, all the GMs were waiting for LeBron to see what he. Yeah. <laughs> like, before they came out, like, statement. bro. That's yeah. how much power LeBron's got. Like GMs of other teams are going. Oh, we're going to wait for LeBron to see what he says. Um, so he, if he, he was if, always going to get sniffing in the crypto game, and now that he is, I think you're going to see it. Yeah. I think so too. And like he's not the sole reason it's going to go up or down, but um, he's going to influence. Smart those in and around, around him. him, smart people around him as well. Rich as well. Paul, Rich yeah. Paul's the guy. Fucking go. Yeah, I love, I love that whole uninterrupted sort of vibe. Obviously, we ripped off their merch, so you know what they're doing. But yeah, like, um, now do you know what? I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this. I won't say who it is. I, I know, I know. There's an NRL player right now who's starting to renegotiate his contract and have an element of crypto built into it. Dun, and dun, the, dun. the second, the second question, the second part of that question is like, <laughs> the NRL clubs like smart enough to figure that out. Yeah. So like it's it's happening. Um, it's going to be happening like pretty. I'm like like I said, and this is like fact. I know someone who's who's trying to. And I, I said to you when you mentioned it to me, I said, "Oh, the clubs wouldn't allow that." And you said, "Why?" Mm. And it's I mean, a form it's, of currency. It's a form of currency. As as long as it aligns to, um, but that'll be the interesting part. So say like say twenty thousand, say fifty thousand was allocated to Bitcoin, mm. but then over the, that time, it, that fifty thousand of Bitcoins worth one hundred twenty thousand. And the clubs go, oi, 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 oi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, um. But once they pay it, it's it's Isaac's money. It's not the club's money. So it's, league's yeah. just copy and paste, man. Once someone does it and they kill it, all the boys like we all dress the same, we all talk the same. Yeah, hit the same girls. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. well, that's it for inside YKTR Shark Tank vibes, bit of crypto chat, and we even got a new studio coming. So yeah, of um, happening. I think so. Scope and Simeon here, they're going to do inside YKTR too. So be a bit of a giggle as well. The See what we got to improve on. The rebuttal. All right, man. Catch <laughs> you later. Up.